You're probably wondering how we got here. Twenty twenty has been marked by the COVID nineteen pandemic. Wearing face masks, constantly washing our hands, and maintaining social distance have become a part of our daily routines. This new normal has required us to spend more time at home and remain attentive to the mandates advised by both national governments and international organizations. On May twenty second, the World Health Organization declared South America the pandemic's new epicenter. The response taken by each country in the region has been shaped by their unique historical, political, and social challenges. In this video, we'll take a look at the measures taken in both Brazil and Uruguay, point to the social changes that have occurred, and discuss the uncertainties that remain. Above all, the pandemic has emphasized the pre-existing strengths and weaknesses of Latin American states and civil society. As of November 27th, Brazil has had just over 6 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 and over 170,000 deaths. Since the virus began spreading, the federal government has been unclear with its nationwide recommendations and regional governments have taken the toll of dealing with the crisis. Among the marginalized communities most affected by the pandemic are the favelas and the indigenous populations. Most of the residents of the favelas are black and brown Brazilians. The absence of state services, which can be attributed to necropolitical practices combined with its dense population, resulted in a higher number of cases. Community organizations such as Coletivo Fala Cari have played a key role in supporting residents by providing basic food supplies and promoting awareness. The notion of superfluous humanity by which individuals have a predefined place and function in the capitalist system justifies the high daily number of deaths and mass graves. Examples of the superfluous humanities are the domestic workers, who are mainly black women. The first reported death from COVID in Rio de Janeiro was that of Clonice Gonçalves, a 63-year-old domestic worker who caught COVID from her employer that had just traveled to Italy. Prior to the pandemic, the municipalities of the Amazon region already had fewer resources and the worst health indicators in the country. Political decisions, including the dismantlement of the program that brought foreign physicians to work in underserved areas and the increasing deforestation supported by President Jair Bolsonaro have made the situation even harder. Due to the lack of hospital beds, those in need of medical care are taken to reference municipalities. However, once the hospitals in the capitals are overloaded, as it happened in Manaus, the system can no longer offer support. Thus, the pandemic exacerbated the social inequalities and the lack of state power in Brazil. As of November 27th, Uruguay has roughly 5,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 73 deaths. Uruguay has taken impressive measures to control the spread, and with trust between Uruguayans and their president, Lacayo Pau, immediate measures and restrictions will be able to be placed and quickly followed by the public. Interestingly enough, the president had taken office just two weeks prior to the lockdown, and yet the compliance rate was exceptionally high. Uruguay was also quick to advance COVID-19 testing, and as Latin American countries became dependent on medical tests from other countries, such as the U.S., Uruguay developed their own testing kit to reduce the risk of shortages. By doing so, they became less dependent on external resources and able to test larger number of people. One possible explanation for why Uruguay was in the position to take these measures has to do with their political culture. Originating in 1903, Batagismo is a political philosophy that has shaped the country's current policies and attitudes. Centered around social democracy, civic participation, and redistribution of social justice, Batagismo invested in education, healthcare, and working and living conditions, establishing Uruguay as the first Latin American welfare state. Batagismo also fostered political engagement and active citizenship, cultivating diverse perspectives through immigration and education. These policies and initiatives were key in creating the active citizenship seen in Uruguay today and can be seen reflected in their current politics. This looks like expansive social policies on abortion, marijuana, 
uh, labor rights and same-sex marriage, or the near universal access to health care, education, child support, and income support. It's no surprise that Uruguay boasts one of Latin America's smallest wealth gaps. These systems have allowed for reliable income support and health care which have contributed to their control over the virus spread. In addition to the policies mentioned, Uruguay's citizen-driven model of democracy has given them an advantage, as not only are citizens more active in politics, they also maintain a level of support for democracy not seen in other Latin American countries. In 2016, 57% of Uruguayans reported satisfaction with democracy, compared to only 34% of Brazilians. This strong relationship between citizens and government means Uruguayans have been quicker to comply with COVID precautions and health recommendations. COVID-19 has affected these two countries quite differently. Brazil's governing bodies continuously fail to take appropriate action in response to the pandemic, even as cases in Brazil skyrocket. This, coupled with critical levels of social and racial inequality, means that COVID-19 has disproportionately affected lower income and racialized groups. This inequality has yet to be addressed by the current administration. In a time of rising patterns of authoritarianism and disengagement in democracy, Uruguay provides an exception to this trend. There is the possibility that this exception has given Uruguay an advantage. It can be difficult to compare these two countries. However, that does not exempt Brazilian administration from critique, nor does it diminish the successful efforts undertaken by Uruguay. Even during the pandemic, Latin Americans have taken to the streets to protest against racism, political corruption, femicide, among other issues. The atmosphere in the region remains largely uncertain given that there are no clear plans as to the economic and social measures that will be taken by the governments to deal with the impact of the pandemic. Nevertheless, we would like to emphasize the thousands of lives that were lost that could have been avoided with improved state capacity and detailed planning. A lot of questions are left unanswered, such as how will these deaths impact our future elections? Latin America, as suggested by Calle 13, is un pueblo sin piernas pero que camina. And given the resilience of our people, the only certainty left is that we will keep on walking. <laughs>